We've all got a game that we put on to get away from our daily struggles. When life gives you lemons, you turn on Animal Crossing, that's what you do. There's a clear correlation here. Life's going rough, pop in a life simulation game. After all, why live in the real world when you can temporarily live in the world of a game? Right, so, life sims. I've made it clear that people love them since they can be an escape from reality. I mean, I've poured hundreds of hours into Animal Crossing New Leaf, as many of y'all know. Needless to say, life sims pique my interest, which is exactly why Stardew Valley caught my attention. Heavily inspired by the Harvest Moon series, one that I am admittedly not very into, indie game Stardew Valley released in 2016 to critical acclaim. Me personally, I didn't get my hands on it until a couple of years down the road, and I quite liked the game. I viewed it as sort of overwhelming at the time, I'll admit. I had never really played a game with so many things to keep tabs on at once before, so I did like it, but I did admittedly struggle to get into it, which is exactly why I started up a new farm. Did I expect to want to make a video after my experience? Honestly, no. Which is why none of it was recorded. Nonetheless, I have started a brand new farm for some supplemental early game footage, but a good chunk of footage will inevitably be from my much more advanced file. So, how do I feel about Stardew Valley after revisiting it? Have I come to love its multitude of features? Well, let's check it out. Well, my grandpa died. He gave me this letter. There will come a day where you feel crushed by the burden of modern life. When that happens, my boy, you'll be ready for this gift. Jeez, starting off real heavy, huh? Ah, <sighs> the corporate life. Stuck behind a damn computer all day. Yep, checks out. But country boy blood runs through these veins. I've gotta get the hell out of here. Oh, that's what this letter's for, huh? So you get the deed to your grandpa's farm, all the way in Stardew Valley. Yeah, you guys like the farm name? The game opens right up. You can really go anywhere from the start, but the primary focus is to fix up the farm, which you should definitely do. Even though it's an annoying process, it'll all be worth it eventually. Trust me. A few days in, Lewis, the mayor of Pelican Town in Stardew Valley, introduces you to the community center, an integral part to the game. By farming, foraging, fishing, and doing various other tasks, you can gather the necessary materials to complete these bundles. Each room you complete them in opens up the game even further, expanding what you can do. I really love the idea of the bundles, since it forces you to explore every inch of the game, gathering goods from every corner of the valley. Evidently, Stardew Valley has a few different gameplay focuses, so let's break them down one by one. Alright, obvious one out of the way first, right? Farming, Stardew Valley's claim to fame. You're gonna start out real small, which is completely normal. As the year goes on, you'll be able to plant more crops corresponding to each of the four seasons. With some being more profitable than others, it's important to spend wisely and only purchase less profitable crops if they're needed for a recipe or some sort of quest or something. By the end of your first year, granted it will be winter, which means little to no crops will be planted at that time, your patch of farmland will surely increase tenfold. There's just something so satisfying to the process of cultivating your crops, slamming them in the selling bin, and watching those numbers skyrocket after you go to bed. Another benefit to some of the less profitable crops is that they sell for a whole lot more after being fermented or preserved. For example, you sell wheat on its own, you're gonna get jack shit. You turn it into beer, and there you go, that's what the people want, man, let's go! You can even get animals too, just like Harvest Moon. Cows for milk, sheep for wool, you know the drill. I love the more out there ones too, like these evil looking chickens and dinosaurs. I mean, you can get these dinosaur eggs from the mines and cultivate them and then look, you get a fucking dinosaur in your chicken coop, that's awesome. Couple all this with a star mechanic with a higher level star entailing a higher quality crop or product and thus a higher sale price, and you've got yourself a farming aspect that feels perfectly fleshed out. And man, after a hard day's work, just seeing those numbers go up, such an incredible feeling. I freaking love it. 
Perhaps the most prominent aspect of life sim games is the act of kindling relationships, and in Stardew Valley's case, this is one of the highlights of the game for me. Pelican Town has quite the variety of characters with unique personalities. You know, like the typical jock, nerd, emo dude, and jerk. Shane and Haley in particular, I hate them both with a burning passion. Thankfully though, you're free to befriend whoever you'd like, which is most easily achieved by completing tasks for them, or giving them items that they like. As your relationships develop, special cutscenes between the two of you will play from time to time, which I absolutely love. It gives so much insight as to who you're getting to know, and gives each and every resident of Pelican Town their own unique flair. If you want to take it a step further, you can also of course propose to them after you get a certain amount of hearts. I married Abigail because, well, sh she's got a Super Nintendo in her room, come on man. You can even have kids if you upgrade your house enough. But I haven't, and I probably won't anytime soon. Besides, I don't need no kids, man. The grind rests for no, no mere, mere child. child. Now, early game cash can be a bit hard to come by, to say the least. You'll find yourself only being able to afford a mere 20 or so seeds during your spring shopping sprees. Thankfully, if you head to the dock after your first few days, the old fisherman will give you his old fishing rod. Sounds familiar. Fishing in this game is a lot different than what you'd expect. You gotta keep the fish confined within your green bar thingy, which increases in size the more you fish. A lot of people talk trash about this game's fishing, and I get why, it can be kind of frustrating at times, but I'd honestly much rather have it than something reaction-based, like an Animal Crossing, since I'm... Well, kinda slow. I really enjoy the sheer amount of types of fish there are, which rotate with the season, and appear in different bodies of water. Once you get a higher quality rod, you can even get some higher quality fish, identical to the system for your goods and produce. There's even a category of very difficult to catch legendary fish from very particular spots. While not as integral and fun as everything else, I still do quite like Stardew Valley's fishing since it's really just pure skill. Yeah, that's right, y'all just suck at it. Alright, now let's get into what is surprisingly my favorite part of this game, mining and combat. So, like most other things in this game, it starts off slow. You get a crusty dusty ass old sword from... another old man, okay? Gotta love the trope. And you can begin your descent down this huge mineshaft, level by level. How many levels are there? 120. Suffice to say, this little side quest will keep you busy for a while, since you can't obviously be down there 24-7. If you're down there past 2am, you'll just pass out. I won't say what you get down at the final level, but I will definitely say that it's worth it for the resources you get on the way alone, honestly. Whereas in the standard mineshaft, there are checkpoints every five levels, accessible via elevator, there is no such thing in the desert mine, accessible via bus later in the game. I honestly love this lack of checkpoints. It adds so much more pressure to your run as you frantically search for the fastest way down, spamming bombs, slaying enemies, gosh, it's freaking great, man. Except for these f**kers, these things do so much damage, and it scares the shit out of me. But yeah, I love the desert mine, they introduced this new ore called Iridium, which appears more the further you go down in the mine, further incentivizing you to speed it up. It's basically the netherite super material of this game, and it's just so satisfying to collect, man. <gasps> yes. The combat system itself is very simple but honestly extremely satisfying to me. A bit of strafing and clicking is all it takes to take down the common slimes and ghosts you'll come across throughout the mines, and that's fine by me. In general, every trek I take down into the mines is just so exciting and fun. With the joy I feel finding rare ores and the intuitive combat to accompany it, it's only natural that this would become my favorite part of Stardew since I just love fast-paced action, just a wee bit more than farming and fishing, not that I don't like those too, though. Aside from the time you'll spend on the farm or around town, there's plenty to do on the side. From time to time, you can accept quests sent to you by mail, or via bulletin board that prompt you to bring a particular item to someone for a cash reward. Nothing too terribly interesting from what I've seen, but it could definitely help you out if you're low on cash. But what about the side quests that yield no cash, but items instead? 
Well, I'll tell my story of one as an example. Now, in the bar, there are two playable arcade machines, Journey of the Prairie King, a top-down shooter, and Junimo Kart, the one that piqued my interest much more, being an on-rails platformer, and I made it my absolute goal to beat this thing, man. I tried on and off for the next year, and finally beat it, quite recently actually. The reward is literally a copy of the arcade cabinet for your own home. Can I just say how I love rewards like this? Remember when the original Animal Crossing had full NES games you could win in placing your house? Can we bring that back, man? I mean, I get it, Nintendo needs their $20 a year nowadays, but come on, man, even just Donkey Kong and Mario Bros. cabinets in New Horizons would be sick. Instead, we get these generic-ass ones, but I digress. And that's Stardew Valley. Barely. On surface level, really. I'm really just scratching the surface with this game. Truthfully, I could go on and on for hours about it, if that weren't all that I've seen. There's plenty more content awaiting me in the future that I have yet to experience, and with the sheer amount of time I've put into the game, that says a lot about its longevity. If you're at all into life sims, give the game a shot if you haven't. It can definitely be a bit overwhelming at first, but just take it slow, man. Learn the game at your own pace, and I'm sure you'll have a great time. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and leave a like, and comment telling me your thoughts on the video and or Stardew Valley. Your engagement is very much appreciated. If you're looking for more game reviews and analyses in the future, please do subscribe subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future uploads. Hopefully I'll see you all again soon. Bye.